All right, here we go. Got a little story for you, man. A little story. <sighs> a little DRU double G story, man. Here we go. Um, man, today's a good day. Just doing some laundry right now. Got some more inventory. <sighs> Another day. Beautiful, beautiful day, man. Life is good. I am blessed. You know, I'm happy. Since I've been clean and sober, I've never been happier. Okay. Just want to put that out there, man. Just to show you guys it is possible. It is possible, man. You know, people say you just got to want it, you know, but it's hard to really see and understand that. Like when you're, when you're deep in your addiction and your alcoholism, you know, I wanted to get clean, wanted to get sober, but I just didn't have it in me, you know, at the time, I guess, to submit and go into to detox and go through all that, that physical agony of withdrawal. But <clears throat> that's tangent right there. That's not what this video is about. So yeah, here we go, man. Um, yeah, man. So <sighs> this story right here, this situation, man, man, this, this could have backfired. My bad. Got an eBay notification. I try to swipe it and it turned the camera off. So here we go. I'm going to leave that intro in there. Um, tangent and all, you know, we keep it real around here. So yeah, so this situation takes place, man, <clears throat> mid 2000s, you know, maybe, I don't even know. I don't even know. 2007, 2007, 2008, maybe nine, who knows, but I know I was I was balls deep in my addiction. I don't know if I was on on pills or H at the time. All I know is I was dope sick, desperate, and making attempts making attempts to you know get clean, get sober. <clears throat> so I went to detox. Been to so many detoxes, man. So many detoxes. So if you hear my stomach you know, rumbling or whatever. I just finished eating. So yeah, that's all the acoustics, man. We're, we're going raw with this. So yeah, man, I went to a detox center <clears throat> and there's, there's two different phases at the one that I go to, right? So you check in, you're in a room with a bunch of recliners and you have staff, you know, checking on you every two hours there's staff in the room in the building i should say and in the room you're in um just one big room with a bunch of recliners you got homeless people addicts and people you know at a real low point in their life man you see so many different types of people all the people that you see on the street homeless knocking out whatever <clears throat> anybody that you see sketch that would sketch you out is in detox but i was no different i am no different i am no different you know they're battling their stuff i was battling my stuff so don't think that you're better than anybody else right don't think you're better than anybody else they're human too right they put on our clothes they put on their clothes the same way we do <clears throat> so yeah but yeah it was still sketch anyway so yeah so the first phase go in there <clears throat> and in order to go to the next room but at the time they called it level one so you're in detox you have up to 24 hours to detox if your withdrawals are severe enough then they'll transfer you to to level one and there is a more impatient style and there is a uh, staff there you get your own room and uh, there they detox you off whatever you're detoxing off of. Um, so I think back then I was there for like the stays, like up to five days. <clears throat> so times after that, you know, I think they caught on to my my uh, my routine of things, you know, because I would just go there whenever I'd get kicked out the house. So I'd be homeless for a little bit, um, never for a long time, because I would always go to detox to sleep there you know i tried sleeping on the street once in a park on a bench i was like this sucks man you know i'd rather be in a recliner 
they give you uh, two different types of sandwiches in the um, detox side. So you either get two pieces of bread and a slice of cheese, that's one sandwich, just a cheese sandwich. And also there is a peanut butter sandwich with, it seems like powdered, powdered peanut butter, powdered peanut butter, just whipped up. It's like, it looks totally different. Not like the stuff that you'd see in the store. Anyway, so you have the cheese sandwich and you have the peanut butter sandwich. Those are your two options as far as food. And there's water in there, water fountains, I think. Anyway, so um, in regards to level one, like I said, it's up to five days. And, um, you know, you take your medication in the morning. For me at the time, uh, I think they give you like a Suboxone, like a pill. And you put it under your tongue and, and you know, you're good for the rest of the day. So, <clears throat> and, you know, every there's alcoholics in there people coming off benzos so they have their own treatment um given to them by the same same nurse um or nurse practitioner whatever it is um and there's also a time where you'd see a doctor and um this story has to do with the doctor all right <clears throat> and real real nice guy real nice guy he's seen me in there a few times before but this particular time, we, we got a little closer. Um, so, yeah, I would see him for the week I was there. And I, I would talk to him more and more every day. Um, he, he would even come to my room, just check up on me, make sure I'm good. And um, <clears throat> so we developed a pretty good rapport, you know, for, for that week there. Um, on my last day, um, or... It was the day on my fourth day, actually. Um, I see him for one last time because the next day I'd be due to get discharged. So, you know, I go through the week there. On my fourth day, I see him one last time in the morning. He asks what my plan is, and I let him know, man, I'm going to try and get on Suboxone. Um, I really don't remember much about the, the Suboxone situation. Uh, I think they... They were, to, they were gonna prescribe me some Suboxone and then I'd have to go to the pharmacy. Um, but but I think, I don't remember the exact situation. All I know is I had an issue uh, when I got out trying to get the Suboxone. I think it had to do with insurance at the time or me not having any money for the, for the copay. <clears throat> Something like that. I mean, obviously I had no money, so I, I'm pretty sure it was that. So I couldn't afford the Suboxone script, you know, and I let him know how I am when I'm not on Suboxone. You know, I let him know how my addiction is and what I what I do to get to obtain my 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 dope, right? I'd go to any extent, right? Any extent. I would hurt the person closest to me. Not because I don't like them, it's just that's what my addiction made me do just the desperation of it man it's like being hungry you know the only thing that could touch your hunger is more food that was my food my my dope was my food it's nothing personal it's just a survival instinct and and survival something that i needed to do to to feel better you know so there was the suboxone at the time i tried the suboxone program three different times didn't work anyway so <clears throat> I let him know, and he said, um, he gave me his phone number, you know, the doctor. He gave me his phone number. He said, give him a call. He's going to be at the university, and he's doing some work there, maybe teaching a class or something. So, <clears throat> so you know, that day passes. Next day, I wake up, eat my food, take my uh, one last little half a piece of Suboxone, and that was going to last me for that day. Because they wean you down. I don't. They wean you down from a small amount. I don't remember. Maybe like a couple of pills, and then a pill and a half, and quarter, or something like that, um, for the week that you're there, right? So I don't know how it is now. It could be different, but anyway. So <clears throat> eat my food, my breakfast, and then I leave. Right? I don't remember. I think at the time. I think at the time I drove my car there. 
you know, I think at the time I drove my car there. I tried sleeping in the car, but it didn't, it, I don't know what was going on. But anyway, so yeah, I drove my car there and I give him a call when I get out, the doctor. <clears throat> so he says, come meet me. I'm at the university teaching a class. Um, go ahead, park, and then come up and see me. He gave me the his uh, the classroom information. And um, so I did that, right? I was walking up the stairs. Um, he just finished class, so it was just me and him in there. We talked a bit. Um, and he, he was surprised I went there, right? But I didn't have any money. If I had money, I wouldn't be trying to get some boxing. I'd be trying to, you know, get my dope get my uh my doc h or or like real perks real blues right but <clears throat> so my plan was to hopefully hopefully get back on this boxer program but i was tapped out of cash so barely any gas in my car so anyway uh he asks how much the script would be right and i i, I forgot how much it was it wasn't expensive at all um, I think I, I actually I'm sorry I believe it was a little less than a hundred bucks for whatever reason <clears throat> I don't even know how if it was a, a week's worth or or a, a long scripts worth right but he's like so what's your plan I was like I have no idea I'm just here talking to you man just because I said I would and uh, so this this doctor he uh like I said, we had a good rapport. So what he does is pulls out his wallet, gives me his ATM card. And he said, go down to the first floor, hit the ATM, get a hundred bucks. And um, after that, just bring me the receipt, meet me back in the class. So while I'm down there, I have a doctor's ATM card in my hand. <laughs> if I didn't take that piece of suboxone in the morning, you know what I would have done? I would have, you know what I would have done. I would have taken that ATM card, pull out as much as I can for the limit, and uh, keep doing that again and again and again till I, till I can't anymore, right? And then I would have just taken off and destroyed the ATM card somehow. But that didn't happen. Thankfully, I had that little piece of box in my system and I wasn't in a panic survival mode. So I pull out the hundred bucks, take the receipt, meet him back in his class and thank him. So, so from there, <clears throat> after that, you know, I thank him and then I take off. Instead of going to the Walgreens or wherever it was, the pharmacy to get my subs, you know, I go pick up. I go pick up, I automatically go call my guy and then just, just meet him and get more more dope, right? And that that was such a close call, man. I, I knew this doctor was super nice. I didn't wanna F him over. So that's basically the story right there. That is a story of, of how things could have escalated. You know, I could have ruined a, uh, a nice connection, you know? I, it wasn't a monetary connection, just a, a nice guy, you know? But I'm sure he's seen and would have understood if I did that, you know? When I'm, when I am off of, of perks and H, I don't do that stuff. I don't do that stuff. There, there's no need to, right? I mean, I'm on methadone now, so who knows? I don't even want to think what would happen if I, if I, if if methadone wasn't in my life, because that's the only thing that was able to stop me. And that's the only thing that's keeping me clean right now. You know, I don't plan on being on it for for the rest of my life. I don't want to. Um, so yeah, that's a whole other situation. But I just wanted to share that story with you guys. I really don't share many war stories aside from the hotel stuff because a lot of stuff went down in hotels. Addiction in the workplace is wild, you know, especially in hotels. A lot of drugs in there. A lot of drugs. Same with restaurants, you know. I was watching a video by Birdman Drug Stores 
he said there's a lot of drugs, you know, in the in the car scene, automotive dealership scene. I get it, man. I get it. Stuff's everywhere, right? So, man, what is the message in this video? You know, I like providing a message, providing some sort of value somehow. But I guess the message in this video is, is or the entertainment in this video is the story, you know. I guess pull whatever message you can from this video. But that just goes to show the message is that's what my addiction looked like. You know, the message in this video, I got it. The message in this video is we do recover. We can recover. Recovery is possible. If you're doing the things that I say in these videos, as far as like all the bad stuff, I understand. Um, also understand that this isn't forever. Your addiction isn't forever. I'm not saying to keep going and eventually, you know, you'll get it one day. If you can, if you can find it in you, go get help, man. Go to detox. Try to go to rehab as long as you can. That I do advise. So, yeah, man. Just waiting for my laundry to, my work, my uh, inventory to be done in the wash. So I just wanted to put this one out there for you guys. Happy Sunday for everybody out there that likes foosball it's foosball season hashtag football so uh yeah enjoy those games man you know i'm just gonna keep doing me keep grinding keep loving my dogs keep being happy keep doing what i have to do keep networking all that stuff dude all that stuff you know so yeah thanks for listening